Gene Siskel, movie critic for the Chicago Tribune. And I'm Roger Ebert, movie critic for the Chicago Sun Times. We're your hosts for this evening, and we'll be reviewing some of the major motion pictures that have just been released. Our first motion picture is part of a, a film of a series of continuing movies, Shazam 5. This film is based upon the lives of the now famous Captain Marvel his alter ego, Billy Batson, and his mentor, Mentor. In this Shazam, Shazam brings justice to some of the, these bullies who raid people coming out of Disneyland, and they push drugs. I found the plot of this movie to be highly cliché in that I've seen it a hundred times before. Also, the dialogue was shaky, and technically it was a disaster. Top that off with some pretty crude special effects, and I'd have to give this a very strong no vote. Well, I agree with you to an extent, Gene, but I found the movie at time to be interesting and even entertaining. On the other hand, it was vulgar and even revolting also. So for those reasons, I cannot recommend the movie, especially to the younger audiences toward which this film is aimed. Our next film is a horror classic from Germany entitled Der Vampire. It is a silent film, but it's tightly constructed and moves right along. It is filmed in black and white, but this tends to enhance the effect of the movie. And you know, I have to interrupt you here because you brought up a very key point, and that's the effect. This movie has a powerful effect on the audience. Not only that, there's one other key issue I think that you've neglected just a little bit, and that's that it has a sweeping style of epic proportion. I'm, I mean, it literally sweeps you right off your feet in, in its grandeur. It's, it's really a lot like the movies of the late 1930s, like Bo Jest and Gone with the Wind, some of those other kind of films. So we both agree this movie is heartily recommended. Now remember, Dur Vampire will not be released publicly, so it can tell your local art, theater, or film society. <laughs> well, here is Spot the Wonder Dog leaping over the balcony, so it must be time to pick our worst movies of the week, our Dogs of the Week. Well, my Dog of the Week is Symphony of Terror, which is actually a complete rip-off of Der Vampire, the movie we just uh, endorsed. Symphony of Terror has no continuity, terrible acting, and its idea of a surprise ending is to have no ending whatsoever. As can be seen in the scene that we are just about to view, Jonathan Barney, a vampire hunter, realizes through a dream that he is actually fighting Count Dracula. but like so many other characters in the movie, they are talked about, but never seen. The movie continues this snail-like pace all the way to its inconclusive end, or rather, middle. You know, <laughs> that must really be a terrible bomb. I didn't see the movie. But I have one that must be at least as bad. It's, an, it's another one of those Hollywood big-budget bombs, and I'm sure you've seen it too, Roger. It's called Spocalypse Now, a truly terrible movie, which combines the U.S. Army, a 60s nostalgia trip, Star Trek, a renegade ape, and a sewage treatment plant, all of it into one bloated parody of a movie. Now, it attempts to parody Apocalypse Now, but with no success whatsoever, as you can plainly see in this scene in which Lieutenant Spock is eating lunch with Colonel Pickering and his adjutant, Major Lackey. Mm. Mm -hmm. Why, Lackey? You hardly even touched yours. Now, Lackey, you won't bite. Are you sure, sir? I swear this thing will. Lackey, <laughs> well, I do admit it has quite a kick. You know, I think it truthfully be said, sir, that your recipe is unique. Oh. 
fuck? Who is here now? Okay. <laughs> I found it full of cliche dialogue, cardboard cutout characters. I really couldn't identify with any of the characters in this movie at all. I mean, I didn't care if Lieutenant Spock went to Saturn or wherever at the end. I thought the acting was terrible and it violated copyright laws to boot. I completely agree with you, Gene. I don't think it's possible to over-condemn Spockalypse now. It just never seems to get itself moving in one direction. At one time it's trying to be a parody of Apocalypse now, and the next they're doing a poor imitation of the Russian roulette scene from the Deer Hunter, and the next we have Lieutenant Spock beaming up to the Enterprise. Now where did the Enterprise come from? That's what I, I never figured out. I was disgusted so much by this movie that I left after the first 30 minutes. You know, those are a lot of flaws that I saw too, but I don't think any of those was the worst flaw. I think the worst flaw was the fact it totally lacked continuity. I mean, for example, uh, Lieutenant Spock says he's never seen Captain Kirk before, but when he comes up there, what does he call him? Jim! <laughs> but then, and another thing, there's the battle scene. I only saw one gun in that battle scene and no fighting whatsoever. What is this, a new army technique of fighting? I don't know. But, uh, it, these lists, these just go on endlessly. However, there is one saving grace of this whole movie, and that's the credits. Because these credits go by so fast that anyone who has the misfortune of being associated with this movie has a chance to remain anonymous. You okay, Rod? Yeah, yes, Gene. Well, a recap of tonight's major movies. We both had two no-votes on Shazam 5. Gene completely disliked it. I thought it was entertaining and interesting at times, but too rude and vulgar for me to recommend it. We had two emphatic yes votes for Der Vampire, the Egyptian expressionist classic from Germany. Well, that's it for tonight. For Gene Siskel, this me. is Roger Ebert. See you next week at the movies.